In this video, we'll create an animated shrinking navigation menu. So let's take a look at it here at the top of the page. So when we scroll down, it's going to stay fixed at the top. And when we scroll down to 100 pixels, it's going to go ahead and shrink. And then when we scroll back up, it'll resize. So later in the video, I'm going to show you how you can make this navigation menu larger or smaller, how you can change the duration for how long the transition is when it shrinks, and how you can change when it shrinks as you're scrolling down the page. In the description of this video will be a free download for these three starter files if you want to follow along with the tutorial as well as the finished version off to the right here inside of the folder. So I'm going to go ahead and in just a minute open up index.html so I'm going to be using the free program called Sublime Text as we build the navigation and then I'll also have it open in Google Chrome while we're editing it. So I'm going to go ahead and put this aside and then we can move over to Sublime Text and see what's included for us with the starter files. So as you can see here we already have the image as well as the heading text beneath it with the h1 inside of the div id content. Okay, so from the top we have the title of the website, then we have a link to the latest version of jQuery, and then right here we have a jQuery script which is the function for it to shrink. So it's going to shrink once we get down to 100 pixels on the page, and we'll be using this class right here that says shrink to change the padding later in the video to give it its shrinking effect that you see right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with our first tag. So let's start our navigation off with the HTML5 nav tag, and then inside of that for our logo we'll have a div ID that we'll just call logo, and then inside of that ID we'll have the image for the Macintutz logo, which is Macintutz Dot png. So I'll go ahead and write macintuts.png and then close out the div tag. Okay, so now let's create our unordered list which will wrap around our list items for the navigation links. So ul and then li ahref and then I'm just going to use a blank link here and write home for the first. Then we'll also give the first one a class that we'll call active because we want to style it differently than the rest of our navigation links as you can see here. Okay, so now if we come over and refresh we have our first link there as well as the logo which we can't see because it's white. Okay, so I'll add the second one here which is about and then we have services, portfolio, and contact. So about, and then to speed it up a little bit, we can just paste this a few times. And then we'll change the third one to thir services, and then portfolio, and then contact. Okay, so now if we refresh, there we have all five of our navigation links as well as the logo right there. And that's everything for our HTML. So let's go ahead and add our style. So we'll just do it internally here to save ourselves some time from creating a style.css sheet. And let's start off with the HTML document itself and the body section. So we'll do a little reset here. So we'll say HTML comma body and then we'll give the height and width a value of 100%. So it takes up the whole screen. And then margin 0 to take away any inherent margin from Google Chrome. And then we'll do the font Arial Helvetica with a fallback of sans serif. OK, so now if we go and refresh. We have some margin disappearing as well as the style of our font changing. 
So now let's go ahead and get started on our navigation styling. So let's reference the nav tag first here. So we'll say nav, and then we'll want it to be pushed all the way up to the top of the browser. So we'll say top zero, and let's give it a height of 70 pixels. And then we'll add the blue background color with background hex value with the hashtag 0099cc. Okay, so there we have the start of our navigation menu. And then we want it to display block. And we'll say position fixed so it stays at the top of the screen. Okay, so now we're only seeing some of it with the display block, so let's give it a width of 100%, and then a z-index of 9999 to make sure that it displays on top of any other content that might be up towards the top of the page, or that it might be uh, needing to scroll on top of because we have it fixed at the top. Now let's add the white border on the bottom. So we'll say border bottom, two pixels solid, and then we'll go with a light gray shade, which is D5, 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 slightly off-white. Okay, and then lastly, we'll add our transition. So transition all ease 0.5 seconds for when we change the... Um, the size of it later on. Okay, so the next thing that we'll style is let's match the original with our logo. So I'll reference the logo ID here and let's say float left and then we'll give it a padding of 15 pixels on the top and bottom and 20 pixels on the left and right and similar to our uh, nav style, we'll add a transition property here. So we'll say transition all ease 0.5 seconds. Okay, so now let's move on to our unordered list here for our navigation items. So we'll want to push that off to the right hand side. So we'll say nav ul float right and then margin zero. And then we'll give it a padding of 25 pixels on the top and bottom and 20 pixels on the left and right. And also let's take away the dots next to them for our unordered list and we'll say list style none. Okay, so now if we refresh, it's going to go over to the right hand side here. And we can move on to the individual list items to get them aligned horizontally. So we'll say nav ul li display inline block. And then we'll want to have them float left within the unordered list that's floating right. And we'll give them a padding of zero top bottom 10 pixels left right to space them out a bit okay so it's looking pretty good now we can move to the links themselves with the a tag so nav ul li a and let's take away the underline with text decoration none okay and then let's make them white with color hex value fff for white and let's give them a font size of 19 pixels and we'll make them a little bit bolder also so this is up to you if you want to have them bold I'll give them a font weight of 600 okay alright so now let's go ahead and style our active class so on the original we have the the gray shade for the active one, but let's include a hover class also for when we hover over the links. So we'll say navul lia dot active and navul lia colon hover, and we'll just give them the color of ccc, which is a sort of a 
light gray color. Okay. Alright, so now it's looking pretty good, except for let's um, take care of the content ID here. So let's add some padding to the top of it so the picture isn't behind the navigation. So we'll say padding top 65 pixels. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And then let's give um, the image a width of 100% so we can see all of it. So content IMG for image width 100%. All right. So now we can move on to the shrink class from the script that's included for us. So up at the top here we have the shrink class. So it says once we get to 100 pixels down the page, scrolling upward, apply the shrink class. So we'll go ahead and say nav.shrink and we'll give it a height of 55 pixels from 70 pixels. Okay, so there we have it shrinking a bit, but we need to change our logo position as well as the navigation links. So let's go ahead and change the padding on our logo and we'll also apply the um, transition all ease five seconds here so transition all ease 0.5 seconds and then nav dot shrink and then hashtag logo for the logo ID We'll give it a padding of 10 pixels all around from 15 top bottom and 20 left right and transition all ease 0.5 seconds. Okay, so there we have the navigation shifting a bit. And now let's change the padding for our unordered list. So we'll say nav.shrink UL and we'll change the padding to 20 pixels from 25 top bottom and transition all ease 0.5 seconds. Okay, so now if we refresh, there we have it shrinking nicely when we get down to the 100 pixel mark. And it looks just like the original, but let me just show you how you can change this around if you want to customize it. So we can customize the transition duration here by changing it to 0.8 seconds, for example, and this to 150 pixels down the page. So now it'll take a little bit longer before we get down to the transition, and the transition will take longer to take effect. So you can play around with it, um, but that does it for the tutorial. I want to thank you for sticking around. Please remember to like this video, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. Then I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.